It's a thick and slimy golden brown goo. It's called rock snot. And it's invading our North Shore streams. The organism that makes this snot is a type of algae that is called a diatom. It's about a tenth of a millimeter long. You can't see it with the naked eye unless it grows in these big, huge masses, and then it looks like snot. These diatoms, uh, Didymosphenia, lives on a, on a big mucilage stock. The, the diatom, if we're, it, the diatom might be this long, but the stock that it produces is this long. What they're trying to do is, you know, they're living on a rock and they're trying to get up to the, you know, where the water is, is best and full of oxygen. But to do that, they just have to keep growing. Didymo is, is actually native in, in the country. It has lived ha fairly happily on the shore of Lake Superior, and people don't notice it uh, too much. So the crazy thing that's happened in Minnesota is this is the first time we've seen it in streams in Minnesota, because these, these invasions of our North Shore streams here. First time it happened was 2018 in the Poplar River. One of the fisheries um, staff out of Grand Marais, his name is Matt Weberg, he noticed it all in the Poplar River and he called me. Got her a sample, she sent it down to us and looked at it and said, oh yeah, this is Didymo. I contacted Mark because I thought he'd be interested. He's an internationally known diatom expert. Um, so he's a, he's a real big deal in the diatom world and he's very enthusiastic. Clearly wasn't like a, a gob of something from Lake Superior that had been put up there because all of the other diatoms and algae that were in the sample weren't the stuff we find in Lake Superior. Our next step was to try to find some funding sources where we could, you know, tackle this problem and, and get a handle on it. Um, the current project we're working on the on the, the rivers and near shore area of Lake Superior uh, was funded by LCCMR and the project started in August of 2021. Didymo really is the triple threat to a, a stream. It affects the ecology of the stream, it affects recreational opportunities of the stream, and it affects the economies because people come up to enjoy the North Shore and enjoy our North Shore stream. You know, you start trying to, you know, fly fish and this sort of stuff with all this goo on the rocks. Instead of catching fish, you're gonna catch snot. <laughs> we saw it here in this stream right now. It's probably, it's probably close to an inch thick coating. Every rock, every rock out there is being just coated with a bunch of goo. So once a year, we, we do what we're calling our, our blitz, and we, we hit everything from the Lester River all the way up to Grand Portage Creek. And we hit about 25 different streams, and then there are corresponding lake sites as well. Mark Hedlund starts by testing the water depth and how fast it's flowing. Researcher Joe Mohan uses probes to measure water temperature, salts, chlorophyll, and pH levels, while Heidi Rantella captures insects. So I'm collecting stream insects with this device called a Cerber sampler, and it uses water flow to um, catch bugs in a net. So I face the net downstream. I usually pick out some of the big rocks first, if I can, so that I can make sure that they get really clean. And I disturb the bottom, and it causes the bugs, the insects, to float up. And it catches all the, all the stuff. And so here's an example of one of the bug or one of the rocks that I collected. You can see the didymo on it. A lot of the aquatic insects actually live on the sides or underneath of the rocks, um, not on the top where the didymo is growing. So I brush all sides. 
And then I also take what's in this net and I put it in my bucket too. And then to concentrate it, I, I just pour it through a soil sieve, which is a, a fine screen. Oh, I see one little mayfly scurrying about in there. But otherwise, I don't, I don't see a lot of bugs in this. And then I just um, save it in a whirl pack, which is just a brand name of a pla these little plastic bags. I just put my garbage in it so it doesn't litter the, the stream. And then I preserve it with um, ethanol, which is just alcohol. I'll take these back to the lab at French River and I, what I have to do then is to pick the insects apart from all of the didymol, which will take quite a long time. I'll do that under a microscope similar to the one that Mark is looking through right now. Um, that looks like, to me it looks like wet wool. And I, I actually can see some insects. They get killed instantly from the, from the ethanol but it helps to preserve them so they don't get broken down by bacteria. Stream insects are important food for our fisheries and in places around the world where Didymo has, is an invasive, we've seen big changes in the stream insect communities. It'll go from things that are good, really good, chunky fish food, things like caddisflies and mayflies and stoneflies, to insects that are more kind of filiform body shape, so things like fly larvae, maggots, or actually some aquatic worms too. Mark has the slimiest job. He uses a low ebb sampler to scrub snot off the rocks and then suck it into tubes. So we've just gotten done taking, collecting a whole bunch of the didymo and snot from the Devil Track River here into this bottle. One of them we're going to use to look at how many diatoms and algae are there. One we're looking at what kind of bacterial community is found on these in these mats of didymo. And the other is we're looking to figure out where the didymo came from. And so we are um, looking for a genetic signature specific to didymo, comparing it among the streams that have didymo to the big lake that has didymo, and then we have colleagues throughout the country who are sending us their snot samples. <laughs> We're in the microscope lab at the St. Croix uh, Watershed Research Station. It's a, it's a lab that we've outfitted with some of the best microscopes that you can buy to look at very, very small things. Diatoms are one of our groups of microscopic algae. Um, they're specialized because they have a little shell around them that's made out of biologically produced glass. Um, they take silica that's dissolved in our water, pull it into their cells, and they can polymerize glass. And we can see in here, you know, the, the beautiful live didymo. Um, they're good-sized cells that are in there. They're healthy, they have a, a, a golden brown chloroplast that is uh, taking energy from the sun, doing photosynthesis, creating oxygen, creating sugars for themselves. And but what you also can see in there is that the diatoms are living on their stock. There's two didymo in the picture right now, but there's stalks going all over the place. And it's that stock that is really the, you know, the, the mucus that we see in this, in this rock snot layer. That mat itself becomes its own sort of an ecosystem that this didymo is controlling. And what that does is it changes the biology and ecology of the streams. Um, in particular, we see different algae that live within this mat of goo. We see different bacteria. We even see different insects that live in, in, in the goo. So we're studying it. When we were out last week with Heidi, she was collecting um, the aquatic insects that are part of the, you know, the food web. She's going to go through, pick them out, identify them, and then we're going to see what they're eating. So we'll see who's eating didymo, or if anyone is eating didymo. We've known that it's lived in the Great Lakes 
that it was reported in Lake Michigan in the 1870s. The first report we've had from Lake Superior was from 19, the early 1960s. I would expect that it's been in Lake Superior for thousands and thousands of years. We just don't have a record of it. We know that it's been, it been living happily in places like Alaska, some of the rocky you know, mountain streams and things like that. But what's really been sort of shocking is where it's appeared in other places you know, where it's never been seen before. Um, it has you know, really shown up in you know, abundant masses of it in places like Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, and then we head east, you know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, um, New York, Vermont, Connecticut, you know, places that, you know, didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we had not experienced Didymo in these places before, um, and it's now growing there. Places that are, you know, some of our, our nicest streams, you know, cold water, low nutrient streams that we don't expect to, you know, have problem algal outbreaks in them. One of the first things that we want to do is prevent its spread. Clean in, clean out. When you go into a stream, make sure your, your, your boots are clean, your boots are dry, your gear is clean. When you leave the stream, let's clean it again. We don't understand you know, how the North Shore is going to respond to it, and our North Shore streams are going to respond to it, but we want to, uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're working on, spending our, our research effort to, to understand this brand new phenomenon on our, on our North Shore streams. Stories about research into invasive aquatic algae, plants, and animals are sponsored in part by the Aquatic Invasive Species Task Forces of Wright, Meeker, Yellow Medicine, Laquaparl, Swift, and Big Stone Counties. They remind us to stop the spread of aquatic hitchhikers by cleaning up everything we remove from lakes and streams, including boots and waders. Remove algae, aquatic plants, and mud from waders, hip boots, dip nets, and field gear before transport. Rinse non-felt sold waders, hip boots, and gear with hot water, or dry gear for five days or more before reuse. Because felt soles are difficult to clean and dry, consider a non-slip alternative to felt. If you must use felt sold waders, designate them to a single body of water. Stop the spread of aquatic invasive species.